All right, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. I am uh, running out of time here, but here's my little uh, home-built Wi-Fi repeater. It has two Wi-Fi cards, and it reaches out from a long distance and grabs some internet and then broadcasts it in my home. So this device is currently um, under attack by a large botnet. Uh, they're trying to brute force my SSH service. And what I've been doing is logging all this activity and collecting IP addresses and um, that sort of thing. So if, if I could just show you a quick image here of what my home network looks like. My Android phone is up in the top left corner. I have a desktop and a laptop. They connect to my little Wi-Fi long range repeater which connects to a modem Wi-Fi router which gets me to the internet. And I'm gonna perform an attack on the same devices that are attacking me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it right back at them. So this is my little Wi-Fi router that I'm logged into. And, and if we take a quick peek at the fail to ban client status, it shows that there's about 730 IP addresses. And we're gonna put all these into Metasploit. And now I'm logging into my desktop because it's a better performer for things like Metasploit being Metasploit is super, uh, super slow. So Metasploit takes a good solid state hard drive. So we're going to cat the test file. Here's my password file. There was my IP list. This is the password file I'm going to attempt on each one of these IP addresses using Metasploit, so sudo msf console and the first thing you're gonna do is if you took the text file full of IP addresses you're gonna wanna import them into Metasploit and I'll show you there's two ways I know of doing this you can scan it with nmap and uh, save the file I believe in an XML document and then you can use Metasploit and import it or you go like this database underscore nmap I think it's I capital L then IP list port 22 and you let it go and it'll every all the magic's done and it's imported into Metasploit but I have found that this method uh, being a large IP list could possibly crash Metasploit. So I'm not going to run that. The best thing for you to do is run nmap in a separate console, export it to an XML file, and then import it to Metasploit. Um, so after you do that, after you import the IP address list, you can then check out hosts. Oops. And you should have a whole bunch of IP addresses now. Let me make sure here. Work space we're gonna connect to the test because it's just kind of a brand new test for this video purpose here show options and shorten the text down a little bit so you'll see the first mod uh, change that I made was pass underscore file is set to dev null the r hosts is set to a temp file that Metasploit has generated I'll show you that in a second uh, threads I have set to 100 and right above that it says stop on success I set to true the user pass underscore file is set to test dot text user file is set to dev dot null and then show advance I had to set SSH timeout to 4 its default was 30 seconds and that would cause Metasploit to uh, fail in queries against the Metasploit database. It would not retrieve the information or in, uh, write to the database in a timely fashion, so Metasploit would just fail to perform the attack. So if you end up seeing a connection database error, that could be one of the reasons why. So to, let's say you're, you've imported your hosts. Now there's a nice little feature here. You have services. You, it represents up. Any services that are up would be right here after you ran a nmap scan it'll result uh, these would be the results filtered but if you give it a capital R it creates a temp file 
and sends, set, uh, sets it to our hosts. So I guess what we can do here is exploit it. Um, maybe for just the demonstration purpose. I had like 30 shells earlier, but this for this video, I think I'm going to... Eh, we'll just run it. So hopefully uh, what I can do after this exploit completes is upgrade the shell. These are generic shells that Metasploit is going to grab you. It's almost like a net cat is connecting to the SSH and provides a very generic pipe for you to execute commands and whatnot um, in a generic environment. So there was one that I really liked. One of these shells was really, uh, it was a Fedora Linux box. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but just uh, one of my tests on trying to upgrade this shell to a metaterpreter, it worked. And I was like, what? And the idea was maybe after, you know, once I, once I dial in this attack, and uh, what if you were to upgrade all the shells to metaterpreter and then fully automate everything? Every single thing, automate the hell out of it. And then what? What do you do from there? We could pivot onto the home networks and try to launch attacks on Windows machines inside of the network. Um, we can modify uh, DNS if the device that we have compromised is uh, a router. We can modify the DNS to inject, uh, I don't know, an iframe or I've seen generating Bitcoin through a web browser. I've even seen evidence of somebody trying to upload a Bitcoin miner. It was a deb file in one of these shells. I don't remember which one. So let's see, which one did I spot here? I want to try out. I see. Oh man, I don't remember. Well, let's check this. What do I have? 10 open shells. So the next thing here is use post. No, oh, fucker, come on. Post multi. Uh, what was it? Manage. And shell to meta interpreter and I had to modify this module a very simple modification um, and this is where things will start to get into the automation and, and understanding a little more of the Metasploit framework and how to modify mod modules um, if we show options how Metasploit functions or handles a, the situation here when it delivers a payload it typically sets the L host so if we set L host to my desktop IP because currently I'm logged into there 69.74 and show options again usually when you launch a multi-handler with a payload or an exploit the exploit itself delivers a payload which the L host is encoded into the payload which if you deliver that payload across the internet and it had the IP address of 192.168.69.74, it is not going to send the shell, reverse shell, back to me. It just doesn't work like that. So what we have to do is change the way Metasploit generates the payload and actually use my public IP address, which I have properly forward the ports and some IP tables to complete the connection. So, fuck. I forget which one I wanted. Fuck it, let's just try one. Set the session for the post exploit to, let's try 10. And come on, I hope it works first time. It worked first time earlier today when I was at work and I was, I was excited as hell. 
So shells on the target platform Linux cannot be agreed. So that platform is not proper. Let's take a look up here. Which one was it? It's got to be like the first one. Let's try one. I might have to kill a job. Maybe. So it, p it posted my public IP address, started the multi-handler, and my public IP address is on your left, and Metaterpreter session 11 is now open. Boom, son! And if we could automate all this shit, so session I 11, and we have a Metaterpreter shell. Boom! All right, so LS, was this the... One bit tornado looks like a bit torrent box. Telnet net stat negative NLP and just taking a quick look. I know there's other hackers currently messing with this machine. It's it's kind of uh, the wild wild west out here. There's all kinds of shit going. There's so much going on there. All right, so Metasploit has all kinds of, of stuff you can do. All kinds of stuff. I can drop right into an IRB shell and directly, like, get into some coding. I love I love Ruby. And I can, I can do all kinds of shit right here. Um, there was a... God, what was it? There was a route. So what you would do here, uh, route, R-O-U-T-E, help. Now this is how you would pivot onto the network. I guess what you would do is set the route, set a new route, you add a subnet and a net mask, and I guess a gateway, and then from Metasploit, we can back out of this Metaterpreter shell and start launching exploits onto this current network. ifconfig. The IP address I think is 10.8.01. No, 192.168.10.101. I'm not sure of a quick. So once you configure the routes, then you back out of my. Uh, you go background, and you escape the metaterpreter shell, and it stays running. And then you use like a scanner. I don't know. Uh, oh well. So. Let me take a quick look at, I wonder if, yeah. So the changes that I made to the file, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I can do that in other means, but there's so much I want to talk about, and, and I'm just, I'm, I can't fit it all into video. This video probably went way too, too long, but uh, let me know what you think, and I'm glad this video was kind of successful. Uh, you know, I got a Metaterpreter shell. I got plenty of shells to play with. I got a database full of IP addresses. I got more passwords I can throw at, at this network. I have a large default uh, user password list that I've scraped off the internet. And I have a word list somewhere around here, a dictionary file. But uh, all right, that, that's it.